Hey everybody, welcome back to Smith Party of Six. I'm Adriana Smith, and today I'm gonna to be reviewing the math curriculum that we've been using this year. So if you have followed us for any amount of time at all, you know that math has been the point where we have struggled the most to kind of find our groove. Super brief history, we started out using the old Good and Beautiful math. My kids liked that when they were really little. It worked out well for us until they switched to the new math. We tried it out for almost a year, didn't quite make it to the full year, didn't really work out for us anymore. I have a video on that if you want to go more in depth on why. We tried Singapore after that. I personally really like Singapore, but at the same time, it just wasn't a good fit for all of my kids. So it checked certain boxes that the good and the beautiful did not check for us, but it also had some issues of its own. So after using Singapore, before moving on to kind of strengthen their confidence, we used easy peasy math for just a bit to kind of keep up their practice. They were still doing problems, all of that. And then this year we have finally landed on the Charlotte Mason Elementary Arithmetic Series, which is a mouthful. <laughs> I've had some people asking me to go ahead and review it. And since we've used it for almost the entire school year now, we're a little over halfway through our school year, I figured that I would go ahead and do that. We have three out of the four books that are currently published. There is going to be a book five. I saw somewhere on their website that originally they were thinking of publishing it in 2023. It never ended up happening, so I'm hoping that sometime this year it'll get published, we'll see. Really quickly before we jump in, I also just wanna say I'm not getting paid anything for this. I'm not an affiliate with them currently, nothing like that. So I am purely making this video just to share these books with you and to give my honest review of them. So straight out the gate, before I go in to kind of break down all of the reasons why, I'm gonna go ahead and let you know this is my favorite curriculum by far. And I asked the kids earlier too, cause I told them I was gonna go ahead and do a review of it today. I asked them their opinion and they were all of the same mind other than our youngest Aspen, he's five. He's just barely starting to use these, but all of them agree that this has been their favorite so far. And I'm saying so far as if I'm still searching, I'm not. We're, we're gonna go ahead and stick with this for our math curriculum for elementary school. Now, of course, my oldest is going to be going into the middle grades as of next year. And so I'll have to find different courses for him for pre-algebra, algebra, all that kind of stuff. But for elementary school, this is definitely my pick. So before I start going into all of my different reasonings, I do wanna go ahead and show you inside of these. So this is inside of book one. When you open up a new lesson, I just chose one at random here. This is how it will start. You see the inside, all of the pages are like this. White with black writing. These books are not so much for the children, for the students, as they are for the parents. You're the one leading the math lesson. This is basically giving you the script, everything that you're going to be doing in that lesson. It's very much been open and go for us. There are certain lessons that I kind of look ahead. And actually, I think that there have been places in here where if I need to look ahead and be prepared for the next lesson, it lets me know that. I wanna say that that was in book three, possibly. But for the most part, all of the lessons are fairly open and go, straightforward. I can just read straight out of here. Most of the time, once I kind of get the feel for what the lesson's gonna be, I don't necessarily have to read, you know, everything word for word. It just gives me the gist of what the lesson is. It gives us problems to work out together, um, practice, all of that. So this one is a formal introduction of money. So it has things specifically just for me. It has things for me to read to my child. Um, and then it has some practice exchanging coins. It does give a lot of the problems in the form of word problems. You might remember that that was part of my issue with some of our previous math stuff. It almost felt like the math got lost in the stories. This does not bother me. This is more of the traditional word problems. No one's losing the math in these stories. It's super straightforward. I'll get to all of that in just a little bit. In the section that my daughter is in right now, actually in book one, they're learning about adding things like up to 100, but it'll take it in groups of 10 at a time. So adding up to 60, adding up to 70, um, all of that. And then within those, it's broken down into sets. So this, it happens to be set four in 60 through 69. It gives us a group of sums. It tells us that the objects to use in this lesson are coins. 
And so in these right here, she is going to practice adding numbers that will fall between 60 and 69. So the first one says, Jasper bought a lollipop for 35 cents and gum for 30 cents. How much did he spend in all? And so she can use her coins to figure out um, that number. After she has these five practice sums, then we move on to some review sums. So one of those, for example, is Georgiana caught six fish, but released three. How many fish has Georgiana? Cooper had 50 cents in his pocket. He gave 45 cents for an eraser. How much has Cooper remaining? Um, so those are just some of the things that they'll work, problems that they've already gone over that they already know how to do. Um, for some of those, like if it's single digit, she doesn't need to write it. She can just figure it out mentally or ones in the teens, usually she can figure out mentally. If it's beyond that, there's also a slate that comes in the math box. And so she'll use her slate. She'll write down the problem, figure it out and tell me the answer. And then down here at the bottom, the last part of the lesson will be rapid oral work. So it sets it up. I hope that you're able to see it like this. So the first one says four goldfish, two goldfish. You as the parent can decide whether you want to do four plus two or four minus two or both, that's fine. And during the lessons, all answers are provided underneath, uh, except for when you get to book four, because in book four, they start having independent work as well. For example, in this multiplication lesson that we were recently in, we start with an introduction to the lesson, we work a problem together, and then we have a few of the written sums here that will have the answers at the bottom. Those are the ones that I'm usually with my children for just to make sure that they're still comfortable. After that, there's a whole section that the answers are not right in the lesson for. You can find the answers in the back. And those are the problems that I have my children who have gotten to book four go ahead and work independently. Most of those sections, it tells them to work them in their math notebook. They each have their own gridded notebook that they can put their equations and things like that into as we are working them. So sometimes they're working just strictly with manipulatives. Sometimes they're going to work problems out on a slate. And then sometimes they're going to be working specifically in their own personal math notebook and anything that they put into their math notebook that's what I'm going to put into their portfolio at the end of the school year to send off to be reviewed. So here is an example of one of the math notebooks. This is Elijah, my oldest son's. Today after he was done with me he worked these problems here in his math notebook. The entire book is just like this. It's basically just grid paper that they can use to keep everything nice and neat and lined up, which I really like because naturally they don't necessarily put things in like perfectly straight columns and it kind of helps them visualize how to keep everything lined up and keep their work neat. And with those books, um, you can also get the math box so that everything that they need is included in the entire bundle. So we go ahead and get the math boxes. There's also videos that you can purchase that can kind of help you as you are preparing to teach each of the lessons. I didn't buy those, but I'm sure that they would be an awesome help too. Okay, so with all of that being said, I will go ahead and break down why I love this curriculum. All right, so first off, it is straightforward math. I know that a lot of people love to do things according to the Common Core standards and Common Core kind of helps your kids know different ways to solve problems. I do find that curriculums that relied heavily on Common Core, like Singapore, for example, that was a little bit more confusing for some of my kids and they just needed to know straightforward, how do I solve this, which I get, because honestly, that's more of how my brain works too. Even though as an adult now, I can understand Common Core and get why it works. I think that trying to kind of teach all of it at the same time, like this is how it's solved, but you can also solve it all these different ways, was just a bit much for my kids. I know that some kids really benefit from that. So if yours do, don't think that I'm knocking it. It's just mine needed more of a straightforward approach. And this definitely has that just simple, straightforward math. In that same vein, it's also more simple because it's a mastery based approach. Some spirals definitely work. Others, I feel like spiral too much and they get kind of lost and it's not giving them time to kind of solidify those concepts before moving on to the next ones. Um, and so I have enjoyed that this is mastery based and that each 
math precept is building on the next one. That being said, if there are times when we're doing a review problem and I feel like my child's not fully remembering exactly the steps of what they had to do, um, then I will kind of circle back and review that a little bit more with them as like extra problems each day. Next, I love that this is fairly customizable as far as the child's pace. So it very much fits like the Charlotte Mason principle of keeping those lessons short to keep their attention. If all we can get through for the day is five problems in that short amount of time that we have, let's say I am doing a lesson with an older child and it's a 20 minute lesson. Let's say that each of those problems takes them four minutes because it's a new concept and they're really trying to get it down and we can only get through five problems for the day, that's totally okay. They're going at their own pace. It doesn't feel like there's like a lot of pressure to get through the lesson like oh these are all framed out so nicely and if you do it exactly like this then you will finish it in the school year and and all of that it doesn't feel that way so it's just very customizable going at the child's pace no pressure there's also really that good mix of introducing a new concept and reviewing the the previous one that was there and it does so in a way that you can kind of naturally get through what's being asked of you, whatever that lesson is, with both the new problems and the review pretty easily. There are sections that are lengthier and it was nice to be able to split those and it's just, that's how many we got to today and that's fine. A big thing for us being a family of six is also that it's budget friendly. <laughs> with a lot of the math, curriculums that you buy. You can't necessarily use books over and over again because your child needs to be able to write in whatever book that you've been using. And that's not the case with this one since really the book with this series is more for the parent than it is for the child. So there's not a lot of consumables. You'll need a new math notebook each year for each student, but those are very cheap. So once you purchase these books, you can use them for all of your children. And really it's pretty much the same thing with the manipulative box too. There are some things that are gonna be used up in the course of the year, but those are very inexpensive things that you can just purchase on your own, could probably find at the dollar store or Walmart. Um, just very easy things are used in the math box. So for large families on a budget, it's a win. So another thing that I love, as I've already shared in going over kind of how the lessons are set up and everything, I love that there's a good mixture of using manipulatives and also the writing side of things. Um, especially when they're younger, in book one, it relies very heavily on manipulatives, not a whole lot of writing whatsoever, which is good for the young ones. They don't need to write a ton of problems. So that works out really well. So also along that same vein of the whole writing thing, um, I know that this is important for some people. There is no workbook that goes along with this curriculum. I am one, as I've mentioned in a previous video, I don't, I don't necessarily mind if there's a workbook. As long as I can kind of customize it and it doesn't start to feel cumbersome, it, it doesn't really bother me how a problem is presented, whether it's in workbook form or not. But I know that that is a big deal for some people. And so with this, there is no workbook. It's just the book. You can use the slate and you can use the math notebook, which is just the grid paper. Next up, as I mentioned, there were certain curriculums that it felt like the math was just so lost in the story. Like you've got this huge, big lengthy story with just like a couple numbers and they were supposed to be able to cipher exactly what to do with all of that information. And it just felt like overkill. That like, that was not necessary. It almost felt more like it was designed to trick them than it was to actually like help them understand math and why we do the things that we do with numbers. I don't know. So I love that this does have word problems, but they are very much like traditional short type of word problems. You're not getting lost in details at all with those. And there's a good mix of them. It's not just all word problems. There are others that are just straight here are the numbers solve. And one of the last things that I love about this book is that there are actually exam questions in the back of each book if you decide that you want to use them. So for our family, we personally do 12 weeks of instruction. We have 12 week ter terms. And then on that 13th week, at the end of the term, we go ahead and have an exam week. So exam weeks are not meant to be something that is like terrifying and hangs over their heads. Honestly, in a Charlotte Mason education, it's more, um, kind of like narration, that you're able to tell back what you've learned. That's what you're doing during exams. You're taking that entire term and being able to show what you've learned. And so I love that there are exam questions in the back of the book already prepared for me. 
toward the back of book four. Here are where the exam questions start. And it just gives you a simple list. So for term one, if, if you started the term at the very beginning of the book, then these are the types of questions that you could use. Not for you to use the entire thing, but just to kind of pick and choose. What are some good ones that would be fitting for your child and to show what they've learned in math? So I love that it has those in there. It just makes it easier for me. I can flip to the back and choose which exam questions that I wanna use for them from that back there. The other thing that I love from the back of each book is that it includes um, extra oral and written review of each subject. So if there's something that they just really, it doesn't seem like it fully set in, either you could take extra time like during when you've been teaching that thing and go to the back of the book, get review questions. Or if it's something that they haven't practiced for a while and then you're finding maybe they don't fully remember the steps to that, you can find those extra problems in the back of the book there. So the way that it's set up, it's just made really, really simple to actually make sure that each child is learning those concepts that they need to know. And honestly, for that reason, it is everything that I was looking for. For me, it checks all of the boxes. The only downfall, the only thing that I'm sad about is that book five is not out yet. I'm like impatiently waiting. <laughs> Thankfully, we don't need it like right now, but still I'm like, I'm ready to have book five. All right, but I think that that is all that I've got for you today. If I left anything out, you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down into the comments. I try to be fairly thorough in my reviews, but of course there's always gonna be things that I miss. So if you have a question, don't hesitate to ask. I love to answer your questions. I will also have a link down in the description box for these. This is not like some special personal link. Again, I get no kickback from this whatsoever. Um, it'll just be a link to their website where you can buy those and check them out if you're interested in them for your kids. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more homeschool content, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.